Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe. Hey, babe. Is, is it too late now to say, hey, babe? Because I'm missing more than your body. Is it too late now to say, hey, babe? Yeah, yeah, I know that I let you let down. down. Is, is it too late to say, hey, babe, babe, now? There it is. Babe, I almost didn't make it today. What happened? I was boxing with Sergio Chacon, a.k.a. Uh, the Puerto Rican freaking... Um, we have Luis Gomez known it's as the freaking po- weekend, baby. About to have yeah, me some fun. fun. Shout out to Kelly. Go Shout ahead. out to Kelly. Uh, we call Luis our friend Luis Gomez, uh, the Puerto Rican rattlesnake. We call Sergio Chacon the Puerto Rican garden snake because uh, he's into flowers and plants. And um, Sergio, who's is, more dangerous? That's see, ooh, a battle of the snakes. I'll would tell be you nice. what, Sergio's more of a hoe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if Lewis just had to box, yeah. Sergio would probably win. Sergio, if, if it was Sergio Chacon versus Lewis Gomez, I still, I think that Sergio is more technical fighter, but I think Lewis Lewis would um, uh, fight dirty, and I think he'd start to bite. Okay, yeah. So, um, but I. Um, so we were we were we were uh, training today. Shout out Overthrow Boxing, um, uh, which I forgot to Venmo Sergio his pay, and I'll continue to forget for the next week. So wait, you were training. Does that mean you're training for something, or do you just when you're boxing you call exercising training? I call right when I'm boxing. You're I call training because you're trying to get better at boxing. So that's training right. for boxing. Right for for the idea of boxing. For the idea of boxing. For the love of boxing. I was tr- I'm trying to get better at it. And and yes, I'm not looking to fight or anything like that. Could you fight Jake Paul? I could fight Jake Paul, and I will fight Jake Paul, and that's a direct challenge out to the camera. Jake Paul, if you're watching, and we know that you are, I'm I'm challenging you to a fight. I mean, our, the Babe Nation will be there, and I mean, you train hard with Sergio. Yeah. I'll sponsor you. I'd like my name on your shorts. Hundred percent on the ass, though. Hundred percent on the ass. And honestly, I I have total faith in you. That will be our Hey Babe Live. You guys did Taste Buds Live, yeah. it was a huge success, which we'll talk about. But Hey Babe Live will be I fight Jake Paul. I want to see event. it. Yeah. Um. So so he told me. He said, "Listen, you know, we're, we're doing a little uh little pad work or whatever." He goes, "But I want to do some live shots." He goes, "So, you know, I let's box, let's let's." Let's train. He goes, I'm telling you, I'm, it's going to be this, this, this combo, and then it's ending with a hook to the left. He told me two or three times, a hook to the left is coming at you, and we're going full speed. Are I you said, wearing a headgear? No. Okay. Because he said we're just like in training <laughs> mode. But he said, I, you know, I want you to really react in real time, but I'm yeah. telling you it's a hook to the left. Yeah. He said it to me two three times. My brain two or three times said it's a hook to the right. It just converted as a hook. It just, I just continuously said it's a hook to the right. Right. So... We're doing it. Ba, ba, ba. I say, here we go. It's coming hook to the right. Blindsided. He, of course, throws a hook to the left. I, at the last second, realized it, got out of the way, ducked down. It hit the bag so hard. Like, it made a pop sound on that bag because he threw it fucking 100 miles an hour that the gym stopped. Where if he would have hit me in the head with that, I would have been fully concussed. Yes. I would have been fully concussed and maybe not have been able to do the podcast. Or the podcast would have been even better because I would do the podcast <laughs> with a concussion. <laughs> and <that's, laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's talk about something else, though. Yes. What about your maneuverability and your uh, agility to get out of that the last second? Well, he said to me, he goes, yo, Pop, you almost got your head knocked off. <laughs> yeah. And then he, he said, but you move well. And then so I moved out of the way. What but, you did, a, you went back? Yeah, it didn't look pretty. Yeah. And I, and I kind of like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, when I saw that thing coming at me, I was like, oh, I, in my head, in like that split second, I said, oh, he said left. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, dude, did I ever tell you about the time at the gym when two guys were sparring at this gym? They're sparring and they're really going at it, right? And the one guy said, he came in and he was like, uh, you know, you have to wear a cup, right? When you're sparring, it's the gym rules. And the guy was like, I don't need to wear a cup. I don't need to wear a cup at all. And the guy goes... I wear a cup daily. Daily. You have to put one up. I wear one right now. I have you one have on one right now. Yeah, because you case. never know when someone's going to punch you in the balls. So we're going in there. 
I'm watching them. I'm just, you know, I'm doing like, at that point I was doing like, you know, boxing, but like a girl. Like I was doing like aerobics. I was doing like, you know, like just stepping in place. And I was doing like lower abs and just hitting it. still difficult. Yeah, yeah, it's still difficult. It, but even if you're going to box like a girl, it's still hard to do girl. Even what I still continuously most times go to the girl sections of the gym, and it's still very difficult to even be in the women's section. Like if I went to a Lucille Roberts class right now, I can't necessarily make it to the end. It's very difficult. <laughs> Necessarily? Yeah. I can't make it to the end 100% guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. So whatever, they're sparring, and the guy's like, I'm not wearing a cup. You know, whatever. He's being a bit pompous. And as 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 we know uh, uh, in the teachings of the Catholic Church, pride comes before the fall. Jack Nicholson said that in uh, in the movie The Town. Um, no, not The Town. What was uh, The Departed? Um I was like, you caught in The Town? No, The, the Departed. I'm okay. sorry. And Jack Nicholson didn't say it. A priest said that to Jack Nicholson. Um which he responded with a picture of a nun's. Uh, uh, he drew a picture of a nun's pussy um, in the movie. So shout out Jack Nicholson. Shout out Jack Nicholson. <laughs> shout out Jack Nicholas. Yeah, shout out, shout out Jack Nicholas. Shout out Jack Nicholson. Shout out Phil Mickelson. Shout out Nicholas Cage. Shout out Nicholas Cage. Yeah. Shout out Cage fighting. Yes. Mm. Um, so so they're boxing, they're sparring, and all of a sudden the guy who is being pompous, you know, twenty minutes in. Goes, oh no, oh no! <laughs> he had gotten hit in the nuts by accident with like a like a kind of a, a uppercut that missed. But again, this <laughs> An is uppercut what, to the nuts. Well, no, he was so low. Like, you had to sink down. Yeah. Yeah. it's like almost not an accident. Yeah, or something <laughs> happened where like he got hit in the nuts, which happens, which is why they tell you to wear a cup, especially at amateur sparring. You ready for what happened? Yeah, it hit at the right. I don't know if it was like a piece of his wrap or his box hit at the right thing and sp right spot and split open his nutsack and one of his <laughs> testicles fell out of the sack. No, no. You no 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 He fell he fell onto the floor, riveting in pain. We had he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, I think one of my balls fell out. I swear. And then he goes, somebody call 911. Yes. So somebody from the gym called 911. And then the EMTs came in, like they got there relatively quick, came in and had to strap him up, whatever. And then what, I heard the gym owner or one of the managers be like, what, what's going on? And they said, yeah, he had a, his scrotum um, is open. I never heard of a so popped he, nutsack. He, he, he split it somehow down the middle and a, and a testicle fell out through his nutsack. <gasps> yeah. So always wear a cup with boxing. Oh, my God. Yeah. The, what about the guy that, the guy that hit him, I mean... He doesn't even. Nobody felt terrible for this guy in the gym. You know, I have I've to be seen, honest with you. I've seen videos on the internet. Okay. That suggest that balls are really uh, flimsy, ironclad. Oh, really? Yeah. You ever see those videos where <laughs> I think guys want that to happen to them? Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then, so I, how do people? How do? How does those people exist? Who well, get they just the like, kick like me that? In the, kick me in the balls. I, I, I appreciate it. <sighs> they think they just have a different level of pain threshold. I think they have a different want of. But what is the what is the fetish there? Like literally, you want to feel like you're gonna throw up, and your and your body's turned inside out, and you're gonna be shaking on the ground. Like, why would you do that to your testicles? And also, there's no way you come back. Like, can you have children after you get punched in the testicles for ten years? Yeah, I think the only way you can't have children if you, is if you drink too much Mountain Dew. Not uh, not the testicles. I think you would have a better chance of having kids. If you drank less Mountain Dew but got kicked in the nuts more. I don't know that because, I mean, what is a kick in the nuts going to do? How is it going to stop you from having kids? Same yeah. thing about kicking in the vagina. Do you think that getting kicked in the vagina is the same pain threshold? Yeah, we'll open it up to Venetia. I've, I've, um, <laughs> I've, I've heard yeah. like it is painful. I've heard some people say it is as painful or it's, at least it is painful. I doubt it's as painful as getting hit in the nuts. Well, because here's the thing. The nuts are hanging outside your body, and the vagina, the vaginal lips have a bit of a cushion. Yeah. So it's like you're not, and you're also kicking an external. You're not, the nuts hurt because they're hanging outside of the body. Well, they're also, they're completely vulnerable, right? Like, I mean, yeah, they, they're hanging outside the body, but they're just like, you're punching, the ex you're punching something specific. When you hit a testicle, right. you're hitting something very specific and localized. L when you hit a vagina... You're basically—it's almost like a uh, like like a shock absorption, like a bumper. 
Right. And then the, st- the absorption just goes through the ure- urethra and the uterus. And yes. And it spreads out like an iPhone case. Exactly. Like when you drop it. And it depends, based off a of woman's, if they have a, what's known as a wide set vagina, WSV, right. you could punch up and your hand can actually go up in it. And yeah. then it doesn't even hurt at all because yeah. there's no pain sensors in there. Yes. Wow, it's like an otter box. Exactly. Uh, right. It is an otter box. On the history of uh, jock straps, it says it is for women, too. Jo- a jock strap for the male, a jill strap for the female. Is that what it is? Yes. That's what wow. it's called. So um, is it just like it hurts like if you're kicking any part of the body that would get hurt? If I kicked you in your thigh, it would hurt? Yes. So, so it's not What if I punched you in the tits I, over balls? Do you think punching a woman in the boobs is the same as punching I, a man in the balls? That's not in popular culture. I never heard like if a woman's, if, the, if a bunch of women are jumping, you hit them right in the tits. Yeah. I've never heard that. Yeah. No, you, it doesn't hurt. D- getting hurt in the boobs doesn't hurt. As much as it would like hitting H- in the thigh. Getting hurt in the balls. Or, yeah, so interesting. I think you guys ah. have it bit bad well we appreciate you saying that men do have it harder <laughs> wow so there's no extra pain because it's your private area it just plays like a regular body, body. part of it. yeah so that's not that's not the same at all you know what i was thinking before when you said Tell something me. It, it would be actually a, a, a nice evolutionary trait or maybe there's a new surgery trend to actually be able to open uh the ball sack like maybe with a little zip or something like as a, like a little coin purse or whatever you, you know what i mean uh, like like almost like you know yeah. just an extra an extra pocket right well if we're gonna go to if we're gonna here's a good here's an honest to god thing if we're gonna go into a futuristic world of having microchips planted into us. Why put it in the wrist? What What is better? It's almost as evolution designed the nutsack to place the microchip in. It's a pouch. If we are, we have a pouch, like a kangaroo has a pouch. Yeah. We have a pouch. It's a nutsack. That's where I'd like my microchip plant, yeah. implanted. But the only thing is then people would have to reach and hold on to their sack and unzip it to get anything out of it. So a lot more men would be touching their sacks on a regular basis. And then, you know, what percentage of people, you know, I, I think there'll be more sacky hands out there. Right. You know, because no one's going to, like, no one's going to use Purell or anything. After they just touch. No one's going to use hand sanitizer. No, no. They, we're gonna, that's going to be, no, that's going to normalize sack touching. I think we're going to normalize nudity um, a lot more in our culture as the years go on. I think, I think, I think our, the children of today are going to grow up with a more comfortable nudity level. I think we're getting more and more naked as the years go on. Yeah, yeah. I think because, you know, like in Europe, everybody's naked at the beach. Yeah, yeah. What, everybody's naked well, at the beach. What, it's just the, their upbringing, right? Like when they're little and they're running around and then they hit like uh, thir- 12 and then they're still running around. Naked. Nobody tells them to cover up all Everybody's that. naked in Europe all the time at right? every beach. Right? I, I, You know, I can't see it, but it's because it's ingrained but in me. But can you believe it? I can believe it. Okay. I see. Well, I, I can. I believe it because I see it. But I can't. I can't believe that that's something I'd ever be comfortable with. It yeah. just feels. I'm sorry. We, we were ingrained, and I said this is. This is a private area that only some people get to see. Well, I've been doing hot yoga, which they encourage getting down to as close to nudity as possible. And when you're get more comfortable. Just being as close to nude as possible. Not fully nude. I'm still wearing like, you know, bathing suit shorts. Yeah. But but it, it went from doing it with a shirt, bathing suit shorts, and socks on to to then removing one sock, then another sock, then the shirt. And now you just get more comfortable with nudity. But what where are you gonna land? Are you gonna land in the banana hammock doing that? Right. And who's that for? Are you if you go from just shorts to a banana hammock, are you more comfortable? Uh, well, I don't know that I'm more comfortable, but I think, you know, this is why women free the nipple. I think yeah. it's like, well, you know, because it's really who decided that the private areas were private? Like, what is it about a penis, balls, a vagina and boobs and nipples that have to be so private? Why can't your kneecaps be the private thing? I mean, I mean there are some cultures yeah. that could be like, look at the look at this absolute whore with this kneecaps yeah. out. Yeah. I mean, animals don't cover up. They don't. We're they're the naked all the time. We're the only people that have shame. Is there any animal that put that does anything to conceal their privates ever, or that everybody just ass out balls out all the time? Every animal. I've seen a monkey in a diaper. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's all my daughter, my baby wants to watch on YouTube. Is that we go to YouTube and she just puts, she goes monkey diaper, monkey diaper, and then we just have to put the monkey in the diaper on. She does. I cancel Disney Plus. By the way, <laughs> can I talk to you about something? And I, I know that they promote the show, but this is like a genuine. I don't even know if they still promote the show. I think they do. Dude, Rocket Money is unbelievable. Yeah, I know. I I use it yeah. do you use it yeah no dude i'm the amount of shit money that <laughs> the amount of accounts 
that I've had open that I didn't even realize I was paying for or the amount of like in my household I had three Amazon Prime same, accounts same exact. I had two Con Eds same. I'm like what the hell is we, going I on had, I had, you, did you, Con Ed was the thing I had Con, two Con Eds we had two Con Eds yeah and I had what I had was the other two one two Hulus two Netflixes yeah yeah I was I, like what is going you on you saved like literally hundreds of dollars but now Netflix you heard what they're doing now no they're not letting you share anymore. If they find that shit out, psh, you can only watch it on, on one thing. So I guess sharing isn't caring for Netflix. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Netflix, you don't have enough money? Yeah. You're not corporate punch in. You don't have enough money, yeah. Netflix? Netflix. I can't share, share with my mom? Let me remind you, Netflix, the wise words of Seneca, the ancient Greek Stoic. It is not the poor man who has too little, but he who wants too much. You're acting poor, Netflix. You want too much. You want too much right now. Okay? You're being corporate douchebags. Okay? You want too much, but therefore you are poor. You are poor. It is not I who is poor. It is you who is poor, Netflix. I'm glad you said it. I yes, was thinking and we were I, all thinking it. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I'm not uh I'm not crushing it, but I'm not poor. Yeah. Because because I don't want for more other than more ticket sales and specials and just overall general inflated yeah, 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 yeah. ego. I don't want more egg sandwiches, you know. Yeah. I am siderably, uh, uh, seriously. Now this is what, what was the word that you just said? Siderably. Siderably. Yeah, I, I post I, it. I, 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 uh, I mixed up considering <laughs> and seriously. So siderably yeah. is also merch, along with um, uh, laxicity. Laxicity, and then last week's uh, uh, saturated, saturated sat. sat. Yeah, yeah, big yeah. one. Yeah, this is the merch coming. I'm considering a monkey as a pet, and I'm not joking. Okay. So my sister is obsessed with those like little. Um, you know the monkeys that play the freaking they run up and they steal yeah. shit from hey, you. Hey, who am I? Your sister's ass. <laughs> I banged your sister. Kush from TikTok. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, would, I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah. That was so open ended. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little DC <laughs> with your sister. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm considering getting Kuj as a pet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you could make Kuj smaller, you ever see? You ever see? What was that alien like? That like. Mac and me? Was it like a little weird alien, like a little ET? Security for my computer. It, it, it's like I thought it was like a little weird alien. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> and you could like shrink Kooj down to like that, that size. That size, yeah. I, mean, I think he would be fun. Really good. So, monkey as a pet. Now, what is do the. Do you think you could do it? No. I don't. I don't think I could do it. But. Um, I think if as long as they don't throw their shit at the wall, which I think you can kind of like that, I can deal with. That's answer. what my kids do. I think they, I think they end up like being almost like another person in the house. You think they can help out and things like that? I do think that. Interesting, but can, what if they bite? Is it legal to have a monkey as a pet? Cannot, huh? You can't. Well, they need a large, secure enclosure, which can be expensive to construct. Um, they need I'm to out. They need to. They need to. <laughs> they need to spend. Well, that's the thing. They spend time outdoors. Like, imagine the backyard in Staten Island if a monkey right, got right, out. Right, right. I don't mean like a chimp. Like a chimp. Oh, because a chimp will rip your face off. Yeah, a chimp does rip faces yeah, off. Yeah. You heard about that lady that he ripped everything. She's like just teeth now walking around. <laughs> She's like a teeth rested on her neck and, now. And do you feel bad I for her? Do you God. think it's her fault she for inviting the chimp into, her, into life? her neck? What? Do you think it's her fault for inviting the chimp into her life? Yeah, because she's not her okay, fault. But you know who I'm talking about, right? Because it was yeah. like a big story. Yeah, and they unveiled her. Her face and it was like yeah. it was it was and bad. she's watching now and we know that she is we know that you are i'm sorry but you know Can we, I don't do know you want to pull up her face i mean i just want to yeah just she, so the she, viewers she, can see she she had a pet monkey for a long time and then one day the pet monkey went ape shit but a pet chimp not a monkey a chimp went ape shit it went by the way did you see world shit. of chimps or chimp empire on netflix absolutely not dude it is uh, oh no oh no oh no Wait, which version well, that is That is a monkey, though, dude. That's that's not a person right there, is it? Is that the chimp? That That's really a person right there? No, that's not that woman. Please tell me that's not that woman. That's horrible. Wait, which but one? But it doesn't is, look... Wait, is that her or is that her? Wait, that's is, her. There's all di this is all different people here. There's a lot of monkeys. Are those all different people that got mauled? It ripped her hands I, off, too. I wasn't too. ready to see that, actually. I... Yeah, that is that's horrible. horrific, and yeah. I really would like to start a GoFundMe for her. I know. It I, might be a little late, a little too little too mauled late. Mauled by a chimpanzee. And did they put the chimp down? I know we talked about this. Man, I wasn't ready to see that. That is, that's actually, well, there's nothing it's funny horrible. about that. Well, if you, watch, if you watch the chimpanzee empire, the thing is, like, they have warring clans. They fight with each other like how humans do at war. They beat, they kill the chimpanzee, then they eat them. They're like cannibals. Like, chimpanzees are, they're... 
maybe we do you know evolve from them maybe we didn't but but they they are very very they very eat vicious themselves? they eat they'll eat like the dead chimps they'll eat them yeah. just like as a flex or? Yeah, as, yeah flex flex on them wow weird flex but okay yeah um I wasn't ready to see that actually. So, that kind of just that kind of just threw me. Well, because I that, feel so horrible for that woman. Yeah, it's it's bad. Oh my god, it is. I, I saw. I told you, I saw a chimp on ice skates hop off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I saw a chimp in, on ice skates with a cowboy hat hop off the stage and bite a bite a chunk of a woman's thigh off. You saw this? Yeah, I, I told you. I was going. Oh, up, right. I was up at like Lake George with my family or something right, like that. You told me that. And yeah. they had this little like cabaret act each night. It was the same fucking guy, and I went every day and watched it. And it was just. I don't know how they did afforded this, but they had ice an ice skating rink, a little ice skating rink. The stage was as big as this room. Right, and there was an ice skating rink on it. Right, and him and his trainer would s- s- skate around in five foot circles. Right, every day, and then on uh, one of the days, the chimp just launched off the stage like mid air with a cowboy hat and a cowboy like sequins vest on with ice skates, and he landed on the woman. The whole table went over. He bit her leg. She screamed. Ah! Her leg was bleeding. The guy was like, "Oh my god! Oh my god!" They got the chimp. They called the whole thing. The ambulance rushed in. Oh my God! He literally took a a chimp chunk bite out of her. Now, did that woman get AIDS? That's what they say. <sighs> I didn't That's keep how in touch AIDS with started. her. <laughs> did she start? That we, we stopped uh, writing to each other years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> speaking of thighs, though, speaking of hot ass thighs exposed. Look at that. We did the live first ever live stream of Taste Buds <laughs> last night, <laughs> and Chris. You came on as the over-sexualized peanut M&M. And yes. let me tell you something right now. Originally, you were going to play Papa John. Yes. And last minute, we were like, but Chris would look amazing in heels with his legs out. as Yes. This and also, you have a way. Right. I have a you way have about a, me. You have a, you have a feminine, sexualized yes. way. Yes. And boy, did you hit a home run. You like that. You came on. You had the lipstick on. Look at those legs. Now, dude. do those... V, as a woman, are we jelly of these legs, or what do we think of these? I don't think people are ready for like, them. Not you, but I'm saying, like, do we, are are, are these legs, like, a yes? No, they're like, yes. I, I, Do I have women's legs is what I'm asking you. Bro, um, th- those are yeah. gams, bro. Facts. Yeah. You yeah. got facts. gams. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what does gams mean? Rocket, Rocket money, money burning up on your subscriptions. subscriptions. I have been using Rocket Money, dude. It we lit- talked about it on last week's pod that wasn't even an ad. Genuine, truly, it's one of the best apps I think ever created. It was formerly Truebill. Now it's Rocket Money. I First of all, not only did it help me go through all, all my subscriptions and kind of you know show me like I had two Amazon accounts, I had two Con Ed accounts, all these things, save money, but then it tells you... You got cal- two Hulus? I got two Hulus. It cuts your... It, 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 it helps me come up with a budget. It, I put in all this information. It gave me a budget for the month. It showed me what my assets were earning. It it's, showed it's me. awesome. It literally figured out, like, it, it almost takes the job away of, like, a personal finance person. This is it. Rocket Money is a yep. personal finance app yeah. that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. It's amazing. Three million people use it. They save up to 720 bucks a year. It's quick and easy. And, uh... It also helps you manage your finances. Yeah, stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash heybabe. That's rocketmoney.com slash heybabe, 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 rocketmoney.com slash heybabe. Rocketmoney.com slash heybabe. You were telling me that you instilled a new rule in your household this week, Mm -hmm. and it is that all of you, for three nights a week, have to get together at dinner time and contribute to cooking the meal together. Yes, and guess what we use? I know what you use. What? America's number one meal kit. Hello Fresh. Mm-hmm. That's what we use, and the reason why we use that one specifically is because, yes, the food is nutritious and amazing and cheaper than going to the grocery store, and they have all different types of recipes, and they all have different types of beautiful meals, but they give the prepackaged ingredients, so it makes it easy for me and my family to give our kids little jobs to say, hey, babe, open up the onions, prepackaged, open up the sauce, prepackaged. All we have to do is follow the simple instructions. It makes cooking fun and family-friendly. I love it. It takes out the busy work and annoyance of when you yes. want to cook something. It gives you everything you need so you could just begin cooking. Yes. It, it, it just focuses on expediency and fun and yes. learning. Yes. yes. 
And no matter what your lifestyle, you always find delicious recipe, recipes on the Hello recipes. Recipes. They're called Hello Fresh Recipes. Well, they also have recipes. They do. Things that you could do in twenty or thirty minutes. It's true. And yeah. I just coined that. And you know what? You're such a good partner to us from day one. You take recipes. You throw a TM or a C on that. You copyright that. That's yours from me. That's it. There it is. Bang. I'm talking to the people at Better Fresh right now. Better and Fresh. Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. And here we go. Right now, all the sorry. The, Hello the, help. All you got to do is go to Hello. Fresh.com slash HeyBabe16 and use the code HeyBabe16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Okay, let me tell that one more time. Rocket Fresh. HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe16. <laughs> use the code HeyBabe16. 16 free meals plus free shipping. I mean, it is America's number one meal kit. You see why. Yeah, we love it. We love you. What's up, everybody? I got new fall dates out right now. ChrisDComedy.com. I got a brand new hour of material. I'm filming my special this year, so come see it live. If you can't see it in Atlanta when I do it in December, come. These are all on sale now, I believe. We got August 18th, Atlantic City, New Jersey. September 8th, Portland, Oregon. September 9th, Seattle. Then we got the theater at MSG on September 23rd because Radio City, September 22nd in New York is sold out. September 30th, Vegas. October 21st, Hammond, Indiana. November 2nd, PA. And then we got Detroit, Columbus, New Haven, Providence. We got a bunch of dates. ChrisDComedy.com for Tiki Wikis. And then the special will be in Atlanta. We'll be in Denver. Go check it out. I appreciate all the support. I love you. What's up, guys? First things first, the Impractical Jokers Cruise is happening January 22nd to the 26th, 2024. We are hosting it with Eric Andre. Uh, there's going to be a ton of comics and bands and DJs. It's our fifth one. You can get tickets right now. It's 65% sold out uh, at pre-sale, so get tickets right now at GetShipFacedCruise.com. You could also enter to win a free trip. Impractical Jokers are finishing out the first leg of our tour now through July all uh, dates and tickets are available at ImpracticalJokersLive.com. In the coming weeks, we have Minneapolis, Des Moines, Kansas City, Nashville, uh, St. Louis, and am I forgetting anything? That's it. Look at that. That's a great picture of DeRosa pointing at me. And I was just looking. Um, no, uh, yeah, games. I, yeah, I a walked into oh, game a leg. Oh, it, like this, that's not slang. She slowly and methodically revealed one of those glorious gams. <laughs> gams. You got gams, gams baby. You got gam. But that I, should be uh, he I got, got gam. gam. He, he got, got gam. gam. My, I walked in last night because we posted those look, pictures. We got gam. You, you, you're like we I got mean, gam. You're, you're the best in the business. Look that at, could look be at a this. pod. That could be the new name of the pod. We got gam. We got gam. That yeah, is I such a funny. That picture. is such a funny photo. <laughs> yeah. DeRosa, <laughs> let me just take a minute. We'll go right back to you. But DeRosa, DeRosa as Ronald McDonald was pure lunacy. First of all, he somehow really looks like he looks like the real Ronald. He looks clinically insane. He looks clinically insane. He looks like the actual <laughs> Ronald. It, it, I felt like he was his most himself last night. Yes, he was. He should walk around like that. The taste buds live between uh, pizza versus chocolate was un freaking believable um, to, to be a part of. It was so funny. You guys, the the, the debates were great. Thank I mean, you, the surprise Thank guest, Guy Fieri, it was amazing. Guy Fieri came on. Guy was, Fieri, yeah. You were there as the you know, Ari was there. As, Q. Uh, Q was there as a stoner. He was getting high the entire night. Yeah. Casey was our band leader. He sang a bunch of songs. And Ari was Papa John. And Guy Fieri called it. It was just ridiculous. It was like a different event. Even if, like Sal said, even if you're not a fan of uh, the Taste Buds, it's this is like a different one-off like amazing event it, it was really cool and when i walked in when i walked home <laughs> last night because i posted some of these pictures on my instagram stories i walked in my dad who was staying over was standing in the kitchen and he go, <laughs> i swear to god he just looks at me and goes when is enough enough <laughs> <laughs> and then he turned around and started walking back to the tv because the yankees are playing on the west coast and he goes they're getting clobbered <laughs> and then he, <laughs> when is enough enough he goes when is, is enough the, enough is the funniest that's thing that's it ever. and then i just went upstairs and took my blood pressure meds <laughs> yeah, shout out los Arden. Honestly, those four words is just, they're so cutting. Yeah. And like he, four words he said to you. And I, it wasn't like one of those things like, what do you mean? Like I knew exactly what he was talking <laughs> about, exactly what he meant. And I said <laughs> nothing and I just went upstairs. You, um, you looked so good. Dude. And you committed. You put on the lipstick. Committed. Slutty Eminem and, you know, Ari uh, as Papa John, who, um, 
was great. And it was, uh, yeah, what time did you guys go? I Because I just left because yeah, yeah. I could not wear those shoes anymore. So I was like, I got to go home. <laughs> we finished just short, very shortly after 11. Did you guys hang out after a little bit or you just went right home? Uh, we, I mean, it was more of like, you know, gathering everything, kind of cleaning a little bullshitting about it. But it wasn't like a hang hang. We, we, right. we were here for a good another half hour, 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, yeah. uh, it was, it was, it was pretty awesome. Um, and, and I got to be honest with you. Is you know the shoes were very uncomfortable. Yeah, the shoes are very uncomfortable, but but I, they fit. Good job. They what fit. What size were those? Those were size eight in women's, and Chris is a size fourteen in women's. Yeah. Wait, what? So I was half. I needed. Wait, what do you mean six they, sizes bigger? But your foot is no. It was smushed in there. Oh, am if I not? Close up of it the looked fr- like they fit. On, that was on my Instagram, pimp. There's a close up of my feet. If you go to just my page, quick, I posted an actual picture, um, and you'll see my toes how they're crunched up all over each other. Um, and uh, yeah, the whole there we go. So if you, oh, I thought just from a glance, I thought they yeah. fit. Oh, so that's even tougher. Look at that. You see? Oh my god. Look at and look at my toe next to my big toe is just smushed over the other toe. Oh. It was it was really t- look at the lines in my ankles. It was ten. Oh out yeah, of your 10. heel is hanging off the back. Yes, yes. <laughs> The heels so hanging you off. You walked in them pretty good. I, fe- I well, I got to be honest with you. I actually felt good in those yesterday. Like if if it wasn't for the pain, I wouldn't necessarily be rushing to take them off. If I, I was- don't, I I, I kind of get how guys who are straight and not uh are, are just have families are like you know what I like to throw on a pair of high heels and a short dress once in a while. I felt good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Joey Camassa did say uh, he commented Happy Pride Month. There you go. <laughs> it, which it is. Well, the, which it is. And that today is the first day. Happy Pride Month. That is. And now, babe. Get out there and suck a cock. Yeah, please. Do do the world a favor. Or a vagina. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you this. Now, I know we both share in common that we don't have hair on our legs. Hairless. Um, I have basically almost nothing left. Now, my just uh, my top of my legs maybe look like yeah. Bobby Lee's chin a little bit. like A, you know, a little bit, yes. <laughs> you know, yes. I know he has a thin beard. An Asian chin, yeah. An Asian chin. But I still have, I didn't lose everything up top. Now, I got, I caught your thighs last night. I'm fully, yeah. And they are as as bald as your calves. Bare naked ladies. I have no hair. I uh, the only. But you had it but lost it, right? No, well, I never even had it. You never had I hair never, on the your only legs. Hair I have, the only hair I have on my body is I have a couple of sprouts like Bobby Lee's chin in between <laughs> my chest that sprouts out i have a little bit of facial hair but my arms and legs hairless you've never had hair on your legs from from when you were younger to right now never it never came out never came out oh that's peculiar my dad too my dad's got my mine. dad's got my dad's legs because they're hairless and so smooth and because he doesn't really have like a lot of rigidity and flexibility in them he's very rigid he doesn't have flexibility in them anymore my dad looks like he's wearing prosthetic legs but they're his actual legs, but they look fake. That's fun. Yeah, yeah. We should have him come on in like short shorts and just walk back just and forth walk for a little with while. With his, his diabetes socks. <laughs> yeah, is that yeah. his, his compression compressions? socks. Yeah, he yeah, wears yeah, them yeah. all day. All right. Well, I'd love to have your dad on in short shorts and compression socks. He would come on the next day. We, he, my dad would come on and be a guest. Why would we not have your father? Why have we never had your dad on this podcast? He's here for the next three weeks. He would come and do it. Uh, easily, that's 100% okay, so he would the, do you it. You know the next uh, record day? Yeah, yeah. It's in, nine, it's in two, two and a half two weeks. weeks. He'll is come he and, still here? Yeah, yeah he, he okay, doesn't so leave until July 1st. So let, let's book him as a guest. All right, fine. Okay, this D- is the deal. My dad, Tampa Tony's Tony coming up Coming soon. on as a guest. Um, but dude, that, 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 those shoes, I don't know if, you, if you're... Have you ever tried, have you ever in your course of work or whatever, or just for fun, thrown on a pair of high heels? Yes, I've been in heels. I've been, they put me in heels on the television show. I've also been in heels when I was dressed up as Yolanda Vega for Halloween. Right. And I got to be honest, I would never choose to wear heels. And if I was a woman, I would never I would never wear heels. Interesting. I mean, you I would may- never choose to wear heels. Maybe I need to spend more time in them, but it just feels sadistic. I don't know what, what women do. I don't know why they do it. They need to look a little taller, need to add a little sex appeal. You don't need that, women. Right. You know, I'd rather you barefoot, actually, to tell you the Interesting. truth. Interesting. Yeah, wear a pair of flats. I don't yeah. care. Wear a pair of things. To, to, to be propped up three inches on your heel. And to and I wonder how many... You have, you have a friend, or have you ever, like, sprained an ankle or broken an ankle uh, uh, from an, uh, an errant heel? Yes. You have. Sure. You sprained I, your ankle? I've definitely had a little sprain for the day because I've, like... Twisted a foot. Twisted yeah, that, that, that's got to hurt. The heel goes somewhere and, like... Uh, for sure. It's inevitable. Word, yeah. If you're a woman who's watching, if you're a, a lady who's watching, in and the we, comments we, on this video... What yeah. Was that? I was going to say, we know that you are. Uh, we know the ladies are watching. Yeah. It's not an all-male audience. No. It. Yeah. No. No. Comment down below if you've ever had a heel injury. 
or if, especially if you're a woman and nothing's ever happened to you from a heel. Or if you I think, think that, it's like can you go back to that hundred percent? If you can, or if you think you're a victim of high heel syndrome, what which is, is the impact that high heels can have on your feet and body, is referred to high heel syndrome. Overuse heels, individual might experience anatomical changes to their legs. Um, they'll have Achilles problems, and if you have, think you're a victim of high heel syndrome, go ahead and call 708-799-7500 and request an appointment at American Surgeons Group. <laughs> How do you become a victim of it? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you suing? The shoes? Dude, what about Salino and Barnes? Like how yeah. the injury well, attorney, one of them died, yeah. and then they just started, and then they just made And now it's just Salino, Salino and or Salino. just Barnes? I think it's just Salino, Salino and Son. Salino and Son. Yeah. yeah. That's my, that was my big idea if I ever got two dogs, I was going to name them Salino and Barnes. Salino and ba that could be a good name. You could name that your testicles, Salino and Barnes. Oh, that's fun. Interesting. Did you, well, you named it, do you name them? My balls? Yeah. Let's I named name my penis didn't... Little Italy as a goof. Okay, that's but I've fun. But I never really named. I never really named my balls. Um, we can name them though. Yeah, I think. I we like should... Selino and Barnes. Actually, it might be the best one. Why don't we have a contest saying your balls? Mine is Selino and Barnes. Yours is Selino Barnes. Yeah. What do you think my testicle should be named? Go ahead and comment on this video. Yeah. Give us two names of what you think when you look at me. What my testicles should be named? Please specify left and right. Thank you. So in the comments, if you've ever, uh, if you're a woman, if you ever had an injury or not injury in heels, and then also please just name his left and right ball. And uh, yeah, wait, I, my ADHD is kicking in big what time. Happened? I up my. Dose. By the way, you look good. Good hat today. Thanks. Yeah, that's a good color, turquoise. Uh, whatever yeah, color. That, what would you say seven, that color is? I, I would say this is a sea foam. Sea uh, foam. Maybe. Right. You know? Do you know? You know this brand? You know this brand? They have those square backpacks. Oh yeah. All colors. Fajal Robbins. <laughs> take, take, take a guess on how you say it. Because I had, I looked it up because I was tired of not knowing. Okay, this is from Sweden. Yeah. It's spelled F J A with the two dots over it. L L R A with the two dots over it. V E N. Fajal Raven. Okay. You're pretty close, actually. What is it? I think it's Fjall Robin. Fjall Robin. I don't think you say the J. But those book bags are, and you have one of those book bags too, right? Yeah, I I I, I have them. In You're the big with them. I don't have one of those, but I but my lady has one, so may, you might have seen it in the house. Fjall Robin Konkin. Oh, is that say Fjall Robin? Fjall Robin. Nah, I heard it was Fjall Robin. What's up, y'all? Yo, what's up, y'all? Um, I I up my dose today. Uh, two day, yesterday, I up my dose of birth control. <laughs> birth control, <laughs> control alarm just went off. <laughs> How to say it? Here we go. How do you say it? Fjall Robin. Fjall Robin. Fjall Robin. Uh, who the fuck's that guy? Like, I don't... Fjall Robin. Fjall Robin. Fjall Robin Konkin. Do you, uh, do you have ADHD? I do have ADHD. And the but coffee it's makes it worse. It's not tended to? Not tended to, but I... Well, it's not tended to. I'm trying to be more present with it. What I do now to try to calm my ADHD is like, for example, today, what I did is I was down on Bleecker Street in Manhattan, and then I walked here, which is, you know, I walked almost across the island of Manhattan, about a mile and a half walk, and the, with the sole purpose of to calm my mind down and keep my, I put my phone in my book bag, because a lot of times I'm walking somewhere and I'm using the GPS, or I'm using um, the, the, the phone and I'm texting, or I'm on social media, so what I did was I mapped it out, you know, on, I kind of said, here are the directions, here are the three or four turns you need to make, keep them in your mind, and just walk, I tried to keep my posture up straight, and just walk and breathe and look around, take time to look up at buildings, if I stop, look up baby, if, if you're I saw something that I liked, I would take a moment and look at it and just Isn't whatever. Isn't it nice? You and it strolled. Helped me. You strolled. To, to, I was walking down Mulberry Street. Yeah. Like we, this New York City is like such an amazing. There wasn't even that many people out, but it's just like vibrant. Even when it's like asleep, it's awake kind of thing. You it's, know that it's special if we are lifelong 45. We've been here for 40 plus years. Right. And we're still walking like this place is amazing. I loved it. And it didn't matter. I smelled the dog shit. I smelled the. The fish in Chinatown. Yeah, this is what this decisions were made. I don't even know what this kid means. Um, this is from Matt Alsop. I, I wrote, I tweeted out to the fans, uh, "What do you got? What do you want the guys to talk about today?" And one fan wrote this. Let me tell well, you what something. What does he mean? He wants you to talk about Letterman. He wants to talk about my he, suit. He wants you to talk about your decisions about the suit. I'm assuming. Oh, that yeah, that's oh. from. Uh, I bought you that off the rack this. at Joseph A. Bank in Colmac, <laughs> Long Island. <laughs> Joseph, I thought that was a bank for so long. Yeah, and then I found out it wasn't really. Yeah, I thought it was a bank. Uh, I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, they just go, you know, jo I just see the name Joseph A. Bank. 
Uh, what, tell me, tell me about this. When you caught the call that you were going to be on, is Letterman? Does Letterman mean to you what it means to me, or what it means to most people? Is he like in your eyes, like the late night god? Or yes, he was. He. Uh, Hundred percent. One of my biggest regrets in life is that I I didn't I I wasn't doing stand up when in, he's in time to make the show. I, I couldn't get on the show. Yeah. Yeah. He. It was amazing. Uh, you know. It's interesting though because it's like Letterman was like it, such like an iconic guy, but like I didn't really you. Do, I, I had five seconds with him and that was it. The like, whole time you didn't. Whole, he didn't come in before and say hello. No. No. So when he walked over on camera, that's the only interaction I've ever had. And with then him he in walked away. That's it. Oh. Which is fine. I don't fault him for that. But that's yeah. the way um, it was. And uh, what did he say to you? Just he's like, that was great. Thanks. I don't even know. Like that's mm. the thing. Like I don't even remember. I remember more speaking to John Travolta. John Travolta talked to me for like two minutes in the green room uh, before. What did you talk about? We talked. He talked about how he was flying his plane from there. He has like a seven forty seven. He was flying his plane from there to, uh, I think Australia. Right after that, and I, I, I think I've told you the story before. Did I ever told you what John Travolta? What happened with him with with Letterman? I, I might remember. I've told said. this on podcast before. I though, might right? remember. I don't know. So so. So when I was I was going up next, I was, of course very nervous. I was in a suit, three times too what big. What were you thinking? Take me, yeah, no, what? honestly, I was take me through this because I think we've talked about it, but I would really not because because you're my buddy and you've been on that show and that's my dream. And I so I really want to get because people don't have these types of experiences, right? You know, like no one really knows what it's like to right. be standing behind the curtain, ready to go out on national television and introduced by David Letterman, right? As a young comic. Right. Is that your first late night? Yeah. First, first time ever night? really. Yeah, for, first late night. Yeah. You had to, how much material did you have then? Did you, they, ha did you were you headlining? That was yet? a five minute set. No. I had So you maybe, got on Letterman before headlining. Yeah. I had maybe, maybe twenty minutes. How did you get that credit? So what happened was is here's so to explain how explain to our, our fans is like you normally so, so normally, so how you get on a late night set or back then how you would get on is Either you got so a big showcase. and popular that they would, you know, just find out about you. Your right. agent would pitch you. But if not, which was my case, was not big or popular, they would have showcases at comedy clubs in New York or L.A. Sure. And, and the David Letterman booker would be there watching. So one night at the Carol Caroline's Comedy Club, which is now closed, but when it was open 10 years ago. Shout out, Caroline's. Shout out, Caroline's. Oh... Oh, I love the 1975 song. Oh, Carol. I wait. I, I'm off beat. Caroline. Caroline. Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, Caroline. That's the wrong Sweet beat. Sweet Caroline. Oh, Carolina. Yeah. All right. Um. So. So. Um. I, I was. So I was at Caroline's, and I was uh, the only place in the beginning that would ever give me an opportunity was Caroline's. Comedy club. I would host for them. I would, you know, MC now for it's them. A, now it's a ping pong. Now store. it's a ping pong thing. But I'm gonna go back and work there. Yeah. Um. Uh. It. It. it you know. And so they would give me opportunity, right? Okay. So the David Letterman showcase is happening, which is eight or nine hand-picked comics. Also, the theaters across the fucking street. Theaters right across. So the street. they come right over there. Okay. Easy. So the eight or nine hand-picked comics. I'm of course not one of them. You know, these are bigger name comics. Sure. Not one of those guys yet. And then Louis Ferranda, the, the the booker, old booker, of legendary booker of Caroline's. I was just there just to watch the comics. I've only been doing comedy two or three years. I was just there. And then Louis says, listen, at the end, at the end of this of the, the showcase, crazy. he goes, you know, we, we're not going to drop checks on them. You know, a lot of times in comedy clubs, you, they, you have spot? to pay the, the, the bill and it's called the check spot. And when you drop the checks, you know, that's typically given to a, a new name comic or no name comic like me at that time. And then you just do the checks. Yeah, you, you eat just the do, bullet. You eat the the the, the, the basically the, the audience is getting their checks, and then they have a comic up there filling time, but nobody's paying attention to that comic because they're worried about splitting the bill yeah. and they're mad that a beer costs ten dollars. But if it, as a young comic, it's not bad because you're learning to deal with that. It's kind an opportunity of yeah. to get on stage. That's all yeah. I was ever looking for. Yeah. So the comics go up, and then I'm going up on the check spot, and then Lewis says to me, he goes, "Just do what you would think is your David Letterman set. Like you just do five or six minutes." So I was like, all right. He was like, it's literally zero pressure on you. Like, you're not a part of the showcase, but just do it anyway. The guys are here. Who knows? Maybe you catch, maybe you catch something. So I said. I didn't know this story. Yeah. I'm glad so I So I went in, and I remember I did not do this bit on Letterman, but I remember at that point in my comedy, I was doing these. I kept doing these bits about my thumbs, about how I had weird thumbs. And so I go out there, and I just immediately start talking about my thumbs. <laughs> And the check, and normally, you know, when the check spot, when they're not listening, 
people are just kind of getting their check and like, look at me. It's like, what does this guy have to say about his thumbs? <laughs> right, right. So I start just talking about my thumb. I forget the bits now. I was like how I've, you know, born like this. And I've, oh, I remember like that a bit. Tostito scoop hand. Yes, like, I, rem I remember doing, this yeah. bit. I remember this bit. And I'm just bit. talking about how my thumbs are stupid. Yeah. And I wind up, babe, I have been having trouble. I was having trouble. Pooping. I was. I know. We talked all day about it. To, I just it wouldn't. It just wouldn't go. No matter what. I I I've backed up. You were backed up. Ripped toilet bowls off the wall. I just couldn't poop. Then you blew out your Tommy Johns. I blew out my Tommy Johns. Then Seed D S O one Daily Symbiotic came yes. into my life because they started with the pod and they yes. sent us a box. Yes. And because I, I love it because it's a, the T shirt that says bacteria. Bacteria. I love. It's my favorite shirt of all time. Seeds D S O one Daily Symbiotic. It literally. Literally cleaned me out and took away all my poop anxiety. I've been dropping double deuces left and right. That's amazing. Yeah, you've always that's what you always wanted. Yeah, it's a prebiotic and a probiotic, uh, and it is effective. It's an effective way to start supporting your gut microbiome, which ultimately impacts Love your it. skin, heart, and various other connections within the body. What's yep. in it? Twenty-four strain broad spectrum probiotic and prebiotic. Formulated for digestive gut immunity yes. and additional systemic benefits. Yeah, uh, it's capsule and a capsule protects against stomach acid, which is yeah. good. Digestion enzymes and bile salts for viability through the digestion. Everybody poops, but make it a good one. Yeah. It seeds DSO one daily symbiotic. Have a smooth, soft sausage-looking poop. That's what you want. <laughs> Start a new healthy habit today. Visit seed.com slash hey babe and use code hey babe to redeem 30% off your first month of seeds DSO one daily symbiotic. That's seed.com slash hey babe. Use the code hey babe. Babe. Uh, it, yeah, babe. I my family my oldest daughter, I don't know, her, just stopped speaking English. She only speaks Spanish. So the only way I communicate with my daughter is to speak Spanish. How I've been learning Spanish? Using Babbel. the Babbel app? Absolutely. Babbel, yeah. language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. It is not done by AI or any of this BS. No. It is actual. Real linguists. Real linguists. 10 minute lessons. I mean, 10 minutes. And they make it fun. It's not like yeah. we did in high school or anything. Mm -mm. You can start having real conversations in as little as three weeks. They, uh, I mean, you said 14 different languages? Yes. No, you just did it. All right. Well, they have 14 different languages. Um, look, if you're going on, these are ways if you want to brush up on what you learned in the past, if you want to learn something new, if you have a friend you want to communicate with, if you're traveling abroad yeah. and you want to land Why there. Why the hell not? Know, if you are going to, you know, I don't know what, the cleaners, let's say. Yes. And let's say the person that owns that cleaners is a different nationality than you, and they're always talking when you're in there, and you want to know if they're talking about you. Right. You get babble, you go in there, you surprise them. Bang. You know? And if they're saying ill will about you, you're going to know about it now, and you can get revenge, and that's all only because of babble. Get them right back. Yeah. Because they got the speech recognition technology, helps you improve your pronunciation and accents. You can really floor these people. And what's going to floor you even more is the discount. 55% off your subscription. More than half. All you got to do is go to Babbel. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash hey babe. That's Babbel dot com slash hey babe. 55% off your subscription. Babbel language, language for, for life. life. Doing like five, six minutes of what was essentially like improv on my thumbs. In the middle of a check spot, I swear to God, three minutes into this check spot, I get like an actual like applause break from like, and again, I forgot the beats I hit, but I then saw the two bookers, a guy and a girl, Adam, and I forgot the other woman's name. They were like fully looking at me. Like fully, like just looking at me, staring at did me. Did you have enough? Would, did, could you hide nerves at that point? Were you comfortable up there? I at that. What's always been my thing for some, and I do not know why. Same thing when I did David Ledman. Same thing when I've done anything. For whatever reason, when I'm in the moment, I have zero nerves. One hundred percent of my nerves are the moments before and the moments after. I deal with a big emotion, but in the moment, for whatever reason, I almost don't feel anything ever. It's like a I don't know why, but it's just how I feel. Like even when I was playing ball, it's just how I've been. But okay. the nerves come on. It's not a great, not necessarily the best thing because when it's over, I get hit hard with an emotional swing. But it's just the way my brain is. I I can't control it. So, so I see them. Looking you had at twenty minutes, and you had to, you had to then decide what of that twenty was your best five or six. But then you went up and just went into thumbs. I went. In, you abandoned your act and you started riffing on the riffing. Thumbs. Okay. And then I did like a bit of crowd work, and then I may maybe even I forgot. I think I even said something to the Letterman 
people. And again, I forget the exact bits. But anyway, had a good time. My impression of it all was like, hey, at least we had like a, I had a, that was a good set for a check spot. Like right. to get people to listen to check spot, whatever. And then I come off stage and I never, this part, I never forget. Lewis says, you're going to get on David Letterman. And I was like, what do you, you know, he, he was like, you're going to, you're going to get, the, I guarantee you get the show. And then I was like, I was like, uh, that'd be sick. I was like, I talked about my thumbs. Dude, I was I got, cursing. Look at, look at look yeah. At for real, look at it. Look. Oh, the, he has hair. I have yeah. goosebumps. Look at the goosebumps. Oh, yeah. He does. He really, really? does. Which is called pilo erection in the biz. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So so he goes, you're going to get we'll Letterman. We'll get back to that. He goes, you're going to get Letterman. And I was like, yeah, but I did five minutes on my thumbs. I was cursing. I think I might have even said like retard or something. Like, <laughs> I use like material that like you cannot say <laughs> right. that. Like whatever. I said my hands are retarded. Something like that. And he goes, he goes, what? All they were looking for, and I didn't know this, he goes, they were not judging material tonight. They were just looking for charisma. They were looking for who is the most charismatic comic. And he was like, I guarantee you. You had that in spades. He was like, none of them are going to get it. I guarantee you, you're the one who gets the call. And I, he was like, wait. He's like, and he told me, he's like, I am not going to intervene. I swear to God, my, I was managed by Conan Smith at the time. Shout out Conan Smith, great guy. And so I told Conan, and he goes, hey, man, you never know. You know, he goes, I'll follow up with them, whatever. He told me this at like, this was maybe 9.30 at night. He goes, I'll follow up with them. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, cool. 10.30 at night. An hour later, I was down at the Grizzly, not the Grizzly Pair. Yeah. What was what was the other one on oh, Bleecker Street? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, not the, the Village lion, Underground. The lion? Where me, the Schultz, Schultz always used to be. Yeah, no. The, no the, um, um, you know what I'm talking about, Pimpy? It's, it's uh, why am oh, I like, oh, 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 we, oh, we used oh, to oh, live I know, there. I know, I know what it is. I know what it is. It's the music, music place, right? Yeah. The, is it the, 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 the um. It was like, Schultz was always there. All like, God, the, we, yeah, it's right next it's to. on. Bleecker Street. But it's a famous on music... On McDougal Street, I meant to say. Oh, not... Not, not McDougal Street, on Bleecker Street. It's a famous music place. Is it the 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 the, the something room? No. Right? No, it was like... There was like... The, there was the Village Underground... The Village Lantern. The, oh, the Lantern. The, okay, I was at the Village okay, Lantern. Okay. The Village Lantern. Terrible. Sorry, the Village yeah. Lantern. Okay. So I'm at the Village Lantern at 10.30 going to do a spot. I think I was I think I think was with Akash Singh. Okay. Because it was always to be Akash Singh and Andrew Schultz were always at that place. He used to like run the room there and we, I went down and, um, and Conan Smith calls my cell phone. He goes, hey, they just called me. They want to see a five-minute polish set tomorrow. Do you have that? Like, they want to come back and just watch you. He said, if, he said, do you have any spots? And I think at the time I had no. He goes, well, we're going to get you on, back on at Caroline's. You're going to come and do five minutes. You can't do any of that material because it was a little too edgy. But come in. And then Conan was like, went over the bits. He was like, do the bit about your father. Do a bit about your cousin. And then, you know, at that point, he was like, do the bit about you going to England. And he was like, that. it's like, it's all bi you know, biographical. He and goes, it's all leaning yeah, into Yeah, he your goes, character. start it right now. He goes, so I did that night. I did... Um, the Village Lantern, I did two spots. I went up to Broadway. Com I did comedy to like 3.30 in the morning that night because okay. I was like just running it. Woke up. Went Were to you my like freaking out excited or freaking out shitting yourself? Then I started to get shitting myself okay. because then I was like, I didn't, I was, didn't know if I was ready or not. Yeah. And then so, and then so I woke up the next day, I had my job as a physical therapist, did my job. And then I went and did the open mics. I went to the Laugh Lounge. I went to Broadway Comedy Club. I went to Eastville Comedy Club when it was on East 4th Street. And, and I went and did all these open mics, paid $5, did all these open mics, running that set, running that set, bombing with it in front of other comics or feeling unsure. And then the night came the worst. to do it at Caroline's, and I just did that five-minute set. And it actually, I wound up getting like more laughs that night than I did the night before. So I was like, holy smokes. But then... Holy smokes is underused, and I love it. Thank you. <laughs> I, so I said, holy smokes. And then, so I did that. And then, you know, then Conan is there. All the people are there, whatever. And then it was a good set. I meet the bookers. And then they're like, great. They're like, great job. That's what we needed to see. And I was thinking, maybe I'll get booked, whatever. I didn't get booked for another two months, but they would continuously come watch me every I, week or other week or so because they wanted to keep me doing that set. And they were watching me in all these different environments. Because, again, I'm brand spanking new. And then I went. And it is not common for someone that's doing mics and doing comedy for two or three years. To get on late night. No. That's insane. So so then so then I'm doing my five minutes one night. They're set there watching me at New York Comedy Club, which is still there on East 24th Street. I'm doing it there, and I bomb. Like, completely, like, just bomb the five minutes. Just didn't set click. To, for whatever reason. And then Conan and I are talking, and, you know, we're this is like a couple hours later. We're talking. He gets an email. He goes, look at this. And he shows me. He goes, book tomorrow night. 
What did you feel in that exact moment? That that then I started something. Get, did you cry? Like, my what did first you thing feel? was I got to go get a suit. I got to go to Joseph A. Bank. Okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing you <laughs> no, I swear to God. The first thing he was like, and you were just like Joseph A. Bank. No, no, no. I literally sat because I did. Con- I think I believe it was a Tuesday. This was a Monday night. I went at like eight o'clock in the morning. Sat on in traffic a Tuesday. on a Tuesday from Bay. I think I was living in Park Slope, Brooklyn at the time. I went from Park Slope, Brooklyn, all the way out to Suffolk County, Long Island, to go get a suit. Off the rack it's at not Joseph a, a. It's Bank. Not a, it's not a close to Joseph A. Bank. At that point, my mother was like, "You got to go to Joseph A. Bank. I have a friend <laughs> in Comac." <laughs> she gets your card. He's like, "Ask for Joseph himself." <laughs> yeah. So I and the reason why I got the set is they told me after I've told this part before. The reason why I got the set for Letterman after failing is because they said they just needed to see me comfortably fail, and then they could be. St- know that because they had seen me do well with it they're like we need to see you do poorly with it so we can guarantee that's odd because yeah. what if you never bombed and you just crushed it we're like ah, we can't we got to see well, him bomb. Well, well they told me specifically because i was so brand new that that was like a requirement that they would have is how does he do an adversity because god forbid yeah. something went south on the yeah. show you had to handle yourself in yeah, that situation. exactly all right so fast forward to As seneca says the true man is revealed in hard times yeah just want to throw it out there and uh, I actually just uh, leased a Toyota Seneca. There you go. Is it a Seneca? What, what I is grew it? up on, on Seneca Avenue in Ridgewood. Really? Yeah. Wow. There it is. Benetti is Greek. We all love yogurt. Very connected. Everything you just said makes sense. Hundred percent. Um, so you're there. You show right. up. Who goes with you? So at that, it was me. What, what, it was me, my girlfriend at the time. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, my father, my mother, my stepmother, and my boy Lukash, who's the godmother of my yes. child, and James Mad Dog Matter, who, who came to my pool party last week and took his shirt off and is very hairy. And as when he got in the pool, my daughter and all her <laughs> friends were there, and they go, "Ew, he looks like a bear." <laughs> <laughs> it's a mad dog, not a bear. He, and then he went. He was like, "Oh, he goes, oh, Bubba's," and he was just and he just sat in the pool for most of the day with just his head uh, at the water. Shout, out to, shout out to shout James out to James Matter. James Matter. We love you. Yeah. Um, you you had the fucking you had the sack yes full circle yes you had the balls to bring seven people seven for, people for your five minute spot when you just you didn't have anything you brought seven people so, well my mom and dad and stepmom were definitely coming they were like there was no oh and what year add, was this this was 2013 oh yeah. and to add to add even more pressure i forgot about this part it's amazing what your brain can do. Like you're in such high pressure filled moments and then time goes by and your brain doesn't even remember it. Only now do I remember this. At the time, I was filming a reality show pilot for MTV that they were f- and all about my life. And they, of course, use this Letterman moment as a moment to film for the reality show pilot. And they filmed with me the entire time. Going to the so Joseph you went a- with seven guests and a film crew? and a film crew from MTV. That's insane. Yeah, and didn't realize how much unbelievable, how much pressure I was. Do adding you have up. that footage? Yeah, I don't. That I don't have it personally. Else. They have it because what was but it, it's there. What was it like when you called your mom and dad and said, "I'm going to be on Letterman tomorrow"? Like my mom's first. I swear. Well, I, I again, I've said this before, but my mom's first initial thing she said is, "Who was the other guest?" And I said, <laughs> yeah. And I said, uh, John Travolta. And then she was like, oh my God. And then I heard her, you know, call her sisters and her friends and say immediately, oh, she was like, oh, Chris is going to be, Chris is doing Letterman tomorrow. John Travolta is the guest. Wow. So it was just all about Travolta. It was just, just Travolta. Which, okay. I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, and so. But and did so, they understand the, the gravity of this? My father did. My father understood like about like Letterman and, and how what big was that was. What was his reaction upon telling him? His whole reaction, his whole reaction, his whole thing was always like what he said to me since I've been a little kid is what you put into it is what you get out of it. He was like, you've been working so hard. You're putting so much into it. So this is what you're now getting out of it. Okay. So he, but he was cool. He, he was like, he was very calm. You know, my, everybody else was like a little nervous, but. But yeah, and then I did it, and it was you're amazing. You're up there. You're in your suit. I'm in the you're suit. You're in a little green room. Yep. There's commotion because it's already hectic back there. Right. Then you got your parents. You got the weight of this thing on you. You got the cameras there. They tap you. You go to your mark behind the curtain. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're standing there alone now. Yes. Okay. What's what are you thinking behind the curtain alone? Moments before. Well, my mother was there actually. She was standing with you. Yeah, behind yeah the she came by. Yeah. So wow. so so so. 
So I was standing there, and the, the sound guy said, I'm going to tap you on your back shoulder when it's because you can't he hear. He told me this. You're going to ready to go. And, and I, kept, hear, I was hear. so nervous. I kept thinking he was touching me. I was like, is, you just, is it now? He's like, I will tap. And then I was so nervous about it. And I asked him I'm, two or I'm three times right in 90 seconds that he was like, you know what? I'm going to gently push you. <laughs> and then he didn't gently push me. Like he pushed me so hard that I thought my mic dislodged. And wow. I was walking out there very nervous, thinking they're not going to be able to hear me. Uh, so when I went out this, there. Oh, is this propped? Is this a prop? You're, they're getting you off the lav? Yeah, off the lav. Yeah, okay. yeah. So when I walked out there, though, when I walked out there, my. Right or left leg, I can't forget which one was in was shaking uncontrollably. It was an, something I, I could nerves. Like it was like the even though I don't get nervous, that yeah. and and it's interesting. I, I clearly was nervous. My brain was making my leg right. move, but I didn't feel nervous. But my leg was uncontrolled. It was like keeping me in the moment. Yeah. And then I had a set that I thought was you know pretty they, good. They liked you. That yeah, and and yeah. and I thought I didn't forget any of the material, and I just did it. And before Is it started, it was over. Head? God forbid I forget. Like, wh oh yeah, what's racing through your mind? All right, I'm excited, but what are the, what are all the like the the doubts? Is it like were you were you just so in the moment that you didn't have time for doubt, or were you like, <laughs> oh my god, like overthinking? Like, what if I what if I what if this happens? What if that happens? What if I forget? I was, but but because you don't have the experience yet, right? To not feel those feelings. Well, John Travolta, because he is he was ended his segment and then there was a 90 second commercial break and he walked past me because we we're all standing in the same little waiting area and he walked past me and he was like oh he's like hey what a beautiful suit that's what he said and i swear to god my mom is there i said joseph a bank <laughs> <laughs> to John Travolta. you're like 79 99. i was like joseph a bank and he goes he goes oh what do you what do you do and i was like oh comedy i was like oh, i'm chris and then my mom's like dying i was like this is my mom she's like i'm such a fan you know, and so and so um, he then out of nowhere, I've told this story before, but I'll tell it to you again if you haven't heard. I, I don't I, remember. What yeah. Out of nowhere, he puts his hand on my chest. OK. And he goes, your heart is beating so fast. I was like, well, you're yeah. shitting me. I swear to God. I was he, like, he 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 was that forward with you. He, went, he broke personal space. He touched you. He didn't even touch it like that. He went like this. I'll never forget. He went like this and he put his hand right on my chest like this. Just he went like that. And I was like the hell like i didn't know if it was like a game and this like, is by the way this is no. right yeah the curtain yeah. waiting to go out yeah like you and know john is in the back yeah. with his hand on your chest yeah and you know like how i swear to god in my head because you know how guys like growing up if they went like down you look they'd be like dick yeah, 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 like that yeah, yeah. like i thought he was doing that to me <laughs> yeah, for some yeah. reason i was like i'm not gonna look <laughs> he's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo! what a dick so he puts his hand on my chest and he's like your heart's beating so fast and i was like yo i was like you're john travolta you just put your hand on my nipple i really said that to him yeah, yeah. and he goes uh he goes, why are you so nervous? I was like, well, it's my first time ever going on national television. And he goes, yeah, but you've done it. You've done it so many times, right? And I was like, no, no, this is my first my first time uh, yeah. ever. And he was like, no, but you've rehearsed the set. He was like, I would assume that David Letterman had to vet you. I would assume that all of this hard work has been done. And I was like, yeah. He goes, so, so now you just have to go live the moment. This is the fun part. You did the hard part. He said that? I swear to God. He goes, you did the hard part. And I was like, and it, and it instantly like calmed whatever pre-nerves I had and then he said to me I'm gonna watch you live this moment he's like what a beautiful thing he goes that he goes I, he said to me he goes thank you to me he goes thank you for allowing me to watch a very special moment in your life he goes th th thank you for that he goes you're gonna you'd be great and then he stands back and then you know we, <laughs> you see him leave <laughs> no, well it was 30 seconds whatever and then i'm like and then you know i'm just waiting you know waiting is he gonna touch my shoulder and then i get the push and i see that he was you know there and i go out have what i thought was a good set feel like locked in in the moment you know the camera guy is like great job whatever you know they're taking my mic off and my mom is right there i was like she was like oh my god honey so great whatever and i was like awesome i was like where's john and she goes he left immediately <laughs> i swear to god <laughs> and then he walked away and but but he did doesn't matter he didn't know that you well he knew your mother was sitting there but he no, did i believe he that he just did it to calm me down and yeah, that yeah, his job was yeah. why would he need to watch a no name well that would make me even more nervous minutes? No, it actually, I was very calm. That's wild that he did. That yeah. is a class act right there. Yeah, class That's act. That's so cool. He didn't need to take time to do no, that. No, and it was, it was, yeah, it was pretty awesome. And he got you in the, he, he helped your headspace. Yeah. And then I went down again to the Village Lantern. After it, it. That was just my In spot. the suit? Yeah, because that's what comics we need to do. We need to knock ourselves down. And then I saw Tracy Morgan coming out of the, um, Tracy Morgan down on Bleecker Street. And that was fucking wild, too, because he was just out there. Just to see him. 
He, well, yeah, he was there, and then he was like, and you were in the Joseph A. Bank. I was, yeah, I was on the Joseph A. Bank suit, yeah. and then he was just like, shout out Joseph A. Bank. Joseph A. Bank, and my girlfriend at the time was like, oh hey Tracy, like you know, it's my boyfriend. He just did Letterman, and he was like, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I swear to God, he was like, I always knew you had it in you. I'm so proud of you, but I never met him at all. And then he was like, I'm so proud of you. And he goes, Oh, look at your girl. She got her toes painted like Skittles. <laughs> I swear to God, it was like a wild moment. And then he, you know, oh, shit. and then and then he uh, and then. So it was like this, yeah, it was a crazy thing. Oh, my so, God, dude. Yeah. Funny. You just reminded me of one quick thing, and I'll say it really quick. There's a comic. I'm not going to say his name, but Tracy Morgan reminded me of him because I'll tell you off. But anyway, I'm, I, I might have told you this, and I might have even outed him already. I'm right. fine. But I was, at the, uh, e I was at Eastville when it was on 3rd, 4th? 4th Street. Yeah, right? now it's New York Comedy Club. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah. And... Uh, I'm sitting at the bar, and he's sitting at the bar, and we're waiting, you know, comics, you know, waiting to go on and everything, and we're bullshitting, and I, he has a a, a, a drink okay. brought over to him by the bartender. Right. Yeah, well, we all, everyone, yeah. So I'm sitting there, we're bullshitting, and the bartender puts the drink down in front of him, mm -hmm. female, young girl, and she puts it down, and she goes, <laughs> spits her, just goes, Bleh. Spits right in it. Fully spits out of her Fully mouth in the drink. As a matter of fact, she didn't go push. She went, I guess, you know when it like you do it slow? Yeah, yeah. Oof. She made it all bubbly and foamy, and then she just let it drop out, and she was like... Bleh. Yummy, yummy, and in it my tummy. And in right, just as she put his drink down, and then he was like... And he just sipped it and kept talking to me. And I was like, what the... F she just... She goes, yeah, he goes, yeah, I love it when she does that. I was like, she just spit in your drink. He's like, yeah, it's great. And he just, he just, it was like a vodka tonic. He just mixed the straws up and just kept drinking. And I was like, I have never seen anything like this in my entire life. How did you arrive here? Yeah. Like, how did you broach the subject with her? <laughs> Can you just keep <laughs> spitting in all my drinks? Yeah. And then she was like, yeah, no problem. And then she didn't even hide it. Like, she just did it at the bar. And everyone, I just was like, what the hell is this? And he just drank it. He just drank it. I wouldn't be able to do that if my own children spit in my drink. I'd be like, I can't look at that. There's something about spit. Spit and feet. There's something S about spit. Spit and feet. You know, ever see the jackass where they t they put him on the treadmill and then they put tubes on him and all of his yeah, yeah, sweat, yeah, yeah. sweat goes into the tube. Yeah. Tube. Yeah. And then it builds up. And then they drink the sweat. Yeah. They're drinking the guy's sweat. Sweat. <laughs> the big dude. The big heavy dude. Yeah, oh, my God. That guy and is it's, disgusting. It's pooling up. And then yeah. they drink the sweat. That's the most... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm almost, I'll almost start right now. <sighs> Oh my God! Oh. oh, it's just coming out. It's just coming yeah. out. I almost threw up right now just thinking of it. I, before I haven't seen it. This has been, oh. hey, babe. Yeah.